Hey, this is DM Allen. Thanks for joining us once again for another week of awesomeness. Uh, let's just get it started. Recently on RWA, our party headed to Chult to find the Soulmonger and maybe a piece of six or two. So Chult. Yes, yes, uh, Chult. I haven't seen anything but maybe a uh, smoky mountain uh, in in the background. There, they discovered the Soulmonger was inside Omu, but Omu is protected by a necrotic bubble. Lucky is looking at you and he's his eyes go wide. I don't I don't feel so good, sir. And then he crumples and he dies. After figuring out how to get inside the bubble, the team finally reaches the resting place of the Soulmonger, only to find Orcus guarding it. The party needed to pull out all the tricks to defeat Orcus. As uh, whatever damage type you did, it turns into Radiant and burns him, uh, burns him deeply. The party brings the fight to its inevitable conclusion with a final blow to Orcus. He explodes outwards and uh, the mass of bone and gore with a mixture of the zombies makes him a uh, terrible uh, uh, C4 explosion. Now, what should the party do next? So... Uh, where we pick up is in the middle of the tomb of the nine gods. Um, you are all circled around the explosion, uh, the epicenter of this explosion, which is also the ruins, ruins of of the uh, soulmonger. Um, a small, uh, a small vial about the size. That's not a vial. Uh, a a glass tube about the size of like a scroll tube uh, rolls towards your feet, Manette, and uh, like taps your toe, um, uh, and it looks it looks almost like a miniature size version of of the Soulmonger, and inside you see this uh, this like ghostly green thick uh, like liquid smoke. It's like really cloudy. Uh, viscous smoke inside and it's swirling um, and uh, uh, Bon like looks to you all and is like whew I thought I was going to die there for a second I thought you were going to die too <laughs> I am really tired so I bet Bon feels like he wants to sleep for the next X amount of days. Yeah. That we will just happen to be doing things during. So we've still got Windwalk. Let's, yes. Well, I guess we can just teleport back to the ship. Yeah. Yeah, that's faster. Yeah, our, our ship last we knew was still like, getting chased down by <laughs> demons. We so. don't know the exact position. Kinian's eyes like open wide. Like, oh like, yeah, fuck. Rings. <laughs> and I fuck. I bap the the bracer on my hand. <laughs> the safety bracelet. The safety bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. While I'm holding these two big bony things. All right. Picture the bracelet like you know how like for... <laughs> Right? I love that. I head head bump it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, his hands are full. Gideon's hands are full, so he just head bops the the ring, and and you see like a small uh, uh, flame, yeah, and a flame imprint on his forehead, and the obsidian flame uh, logo like lights up with the with this like dark purple light, and then he whew, disappears. <laughs> I just imagine his bracelet being made out of like really sturdy, almost indestructible stuff. Yeah, like a granite bracer. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yep. Like of some type where it's where it's like formed granite that's held on by muscle. It's not circling the whole thing, but it's just kind of like a clasp almost, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was so imagining you need to take a, it a out. You, you unflex your muscles. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, all that's the time. Awesome. Like, <clears throat> I got this. <laughs> Uh, I magic. grab Vodette and and teleport back to the ship. All right, um, I'm pretty pretty sure we're done here. And if not, we'll come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty sure we're done. All right. Uh, so, uh, Bon Bamps back. Tin Bamps back. Keo, do you, is there anything you want to do? Do you want to Bamp back? You are alone in this tomb. 
I'm going to look at the broken soulmonger and ponder it for a minute and think about how I can fix it to save them all. And then I realize everyone else is gone and I'll bamf back. Um, when you, when you get back to the ship, you hear, um, you hear rings cursing and, uh, uh, you hear the, like, the thwop, thwop, uh, sound of the ballista and, uh, you hear Yin yelling at Deke. Uh, she says, crank faster, boy. They're gaining on us. I start shooting at Deke. All right. All right. I'm sure they're in range. Yeah. Point bad. Yeah. But. You guys, uh, you guys run to the top deck and what you see is a cloud of, of, uh, <coughs> Is it Nesmi? It, uh, uh, you guys fought them. They, they've they got uh, big leathery black wings, uh, and you don't want them to get close because they'll stun you with their glares. Um, you guys get to the top of the uh, the top deck, and there is uh, this cloud of, of demons, and uh, they seem to be... They seem to have been chasing the ship, but what you notice is... Um, uh, they have like completely sprawled out um, and this cloud pack starts like uh, expanding and expanding and they all start to like uh, fly in different directions. I begin scribbling on the deck. That can't be good. I checked to see if it was what um, Valindra, Rings, and Deke that we had left. Uh, Yin, Deke, or and Rings. Yin, okay. Yep. Yeah, Valindra's the lich. Never mind. Um, I check to make sure that they're all okay. Okay. And if they need any emergency healing. They they seem all right. Um, rings rings us uh, <clears throat> on one end of the ship and is like shooting shooting finger gun uh, lasers at them. Uh, uh, you see like some of them hit and the uh, demon like completely disintegrates. Um, like no ash or anything. It just, ah, and it's gone. Uh, um, uh, they, they seem all right. A little worse for wear. They, they seem like they've been doing an okay job of defending the, the ship. Okay. Um, uh, looking around, you do notice the ship has taken, um, a bit of damage, uh, uh since you guys have gotten to Chult. Um, but it's not anything substantial where where it's unrunnable. Gotcha. Um, so the, the ship was being gained on, but now the pursuers are branching off going in multiple scared directions. Of us. Yeah, they've lost cohesion, and they're scared of us. I think I think uh, I think Manette nails it with that one. Um, they're probably under control of Orcus. To mm. some degree, and, and he's no longer exerting his will. Bon, because bon, he dead. Yeah, Bon echoes that, and he says, <clears throat> "Yeah, if demons are are a force of chaos, and they somehow they somehow focused enough to beat the demon or the devils, um, I'm wondering I'm wondering if you're right that a demon lord means that uh that they have focus, and anything else is just." Random, Pure chaos. Random chaos. Hmm. I look down at the the wand of Orcus, or probably look up at it. <laughs> sure, yeah. And kind of smirk a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, huh. wasn't it attuned to him? So wouldn't it now? It. He hasn't had time. Oh, but it wasn't like unattuned from Orcus. It is unattuned. It is unattuned currently. Oh, but that's its normal size is just being gigantic. Currently, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep, when you attune to a weapon, that's when it shrinks. It's kind of like sinking. Yeah, I just didn't know if the weapon was like X height and it had grown for Orcus. I don't think it changes until it until is it gets a new attunement. Attuned right, right, exactly, okay. exactly. That's that's what I was wondering. It also depends on the item. Some don't yeah, resize. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yep, yep. And uh, uh, Kenyon, you're like you're inspecting these these two items and like the other one's the rattle, right? It is. It is. Um, uh, you're looking at these, and they both have skulls on top. Uh, one of the skulls is like its mouth is completely agape. Uh, that's that's the uh, wand of Orcus, mm -hmm. and the other one is a skull with spine 
Um, uh, and it's it, it's about as big as a mace. Um, and that skull, uh, that skull's mouth is moving. It looks towards you, and it looks like around the ship. And he says, "Hey, that's my old mace." And he's looking right at Tin. What? Yeah. He, it's like he looks back at you and he's, what do you mean, what? That's my old mace. I don't think Wait, you're going to like it as much now. Mace? Who Mine. are you? I'm Ezekiel Lightbringer. Who are you? Minette Mernig, leader of the Order of the Obsidian Flame. Shake me at him. Or shake me at him. Don't do that. Be polite. <laughs> Nice to meet you, Manette. Uh, okay. That's not the weirdest thing I've done. <laughs> How are you just a skull and spine? Well, I was killed by a Sarak. I was trying to hunt him down and stop this whole soul monger thing a long time ago. I lost, and he made me a baby rattle. Yeah, keep fucking no, laughing. I'm not la la Manette is not <laughs> laughing. That's me. That is the player. Manette is more Kyo's laughing than that. Kyo's laughing. As he, as he very seriously draws more sigils on the deck. He like he like he shifts his head and you can hear like a uh shik, 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 like in, in his cranium and he says keep laughing. Cobalt. Uh Tenuviel is <clears throat> on guard because I mean even if his story is true and he was this like person trying to kill Orcus a while ago his soul could have been like twisted and warped from sure. becoming the one so she doesn't trust this thing. Kenyon looks down at the the mace and like turns the, the mace to like face him like right in his face and just like your breath stinks. How what? Yeah. Uh, how <laughs> can you be a baby rattle? I don't see any blades. <laughs> well, I'm not an orcish baby rattle. And then I shake it a little bit. <laughs> I'm not a musical instrument, okay? Uh. You know, it's only because you're setting limitations on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, why are you like do you have any useful information you can give us about Orcus or the other demons yeah I mean I was there during the last chaos wars damn you are old hey 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm old but I still look young <laughs> He's just fully skeleton. No. No, no one no one says anything <laughs> to that. Bond's like, mm. <laughs> We'll just let that comment. <clears throat> How long ago was the Chaos War? I don't know. I haven't. Kind of lose track of time when you're yeah. a baby rattle. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, we, I didn't get to see the sun since Kenyan, I died. Mm -hmm. I think most of your ancestors wouldn't have been born yet. Like 50 years ago or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, huh. So you were screaming to be saved back there. Yeah. And, and you we've, saved me. We saved you. What's your what, what's your goal? What, what would you like to do with uh, your um, life? From now on, do I don't want, know. I do never wanna, really thought about that. Do you want to continue to be a baby rattle, or like, sh should we like release your soul from a curse <laughs> so or, that you can rest? <laughs> should he, we like, do that after we kill all the demons? He like looks down okay. at the ground, and he like looks back up at you with no eyes, and uh, and he says, "I like killing demons." Hmm. Do you I, have any powers? Oh left? yeah. Are you able So you were some manner of wizard or No, I was a protected. A pr oh. What? A protected. Yeah, like that guy. 
and he like shifts towards Bond and he like shakes his head. Um, I have a plan forming in my head that might be cool. Just gonna throw this out there. Could I somehow attach him into Volti and give him control of Volti? <laughs> Uh, probably not. No. No. <laughs> no. No. I ask Ezekiel, um, so are you able to cast magic on your own? Um, no, I can't. I can't cast any powers. Um, but I'm powerful and I oh, can kill we don't, many demons. We don't dispute that part. Does your mace do anything special? Like, and I look over at Lightbringer and, like, kind of point with my foot because I. Both my hands are full. <laughs> <laughs> Headbutt to Lightbringer. <laughs> um, he, he says, "Well, I can heal people. Can can you heal Bond or like him, the protected? That's Bond, by the way." Oh, um, sure. Who wants to help? Help? What? What? We have would to need be to do? attuned. Yeah, you gotta. You gotta. You know, get to know me a little bit, and and then after that, we gotta hit something, and and then uh, and then we can help your friend out. Do do we have to hit him, and you'll heal him, or do we hit something else? That'd be a net wash. Um, yeah, hit something else, and then hit him. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, no, I'm sorry, I misspoke. I, I really have been down there a long time. Um, yeah, you just hit something else, and and let me know who you want me to heal. So when you hurt somebody, you convert that into health for somebody else. Yeah, basically. Yeah, he. I could definitely feel my health being drained by something necrotic when we were fighting that ugly baby monster. Kyo ambles over to the um to the skeleton mace thing. He says, "Ah, uh, Mister Lightbringer, can you help me out?" Uh, what what do you need help with? And he, he pulls out his out of tune tuning fork and he's like, "Could you spit on this?" Uh, he like he goes, ah! and then nothing happens. <laughs> he just makes the noise. Ah! <laughs> I need this bit of a protected. <laughs> uh, Kinian walks up to Tin and thrusts Ezekiel at her. Like, <laughs> you two figure this out. I need to go rest. You're not the only one, kid. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of us need to rest. Um, I'm only down 85 hit, hit points. <laughs> what are hit points? <laughs> We've only been awake for a really long time and have had a magical, like, long rest happen. You guys took cocaine last time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's a good way of putting it. Anyways, we took cocaine. Kyo's yep. ready. He tries out his spell anyway. Okay, What? what is it? Um, he, he's trying to plane shift the whole ship. Oh, okay. casting at one. Okay, that's what the runes were about. And um, so okay, gosh. he thwangs the um out of tune tuning fork and like sticks it in the middle of the circle on the deck. Okay, and he's trying to make the ship ethereal to speed it up. Make oh. the ship ethereal, yep. so into the ethereal plane. That's what I figure, because that's, that's a it's it's an out of tune tuning fork, yeah. so it's not quite right. So it's got to be a plane <laughs> close oh, to the material so plane. Oh Ben, you are I I love I love that. That's awesome. All right, plane shift. Is there a failure rate? Um, well, there's a bit. I'm trying to plane shift a whole ship, so it's more than the spells okay. meant for. Okay. And um, you know he he's gonna burn an eighth level slot, and then probably he. He's just going to feed magic until he's out. Keep trying to do it. Taps on Keo's shoulder to help him with some guidance. Keo plane nice. shifts the ship, but all the players are left behind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> this is totally out. Rules. Um, no, I, I really like cool. that. So, so Keo, you, you take the fork. You've got 
your markings on uh, on the deck. He was even using dragon bile in the ink. Ooh, nice. See, I'm sure nice. Keel's been putting runes all over the ship for months or something. <laughs> I'm yeah. protecting the ship. So. Yeah, but you it's really like usually... Keel's kid drawings. <laughs> it's like Keel with big muscles. Usually he's like... um he's like marking his territory when he's doing it. It's hundred <laughs> percent that. Yeah. It's just little stick figure of little Trogdor Keel. Yes. Trogdor Keel. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, um, uh, in Cran. Yeah, in Cran. Uh, uh, Keo, you take the fork, you hit the heel of your foot, and it starts to vibrate. Uh, and when you when you see it vibrate, you see like space around it vibrate as well, almost like you're turning reality into some sort of liquid. Um, uh, you flip it end over end, and you stab it. Uh, down into the wood, uh, right, right between, uh, right in one seam where two planks come yeah. together, <laughs> and uh, the top of the fork starts vibrating, uh, whoop, 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 and then the ship starts vibrating, and everybody starts vibrating on it, uh, and you all move through this like very liquid space, and what you enter is like a uh, a bluish green. Uh, reality that looks uh, it looks like you guys haven't really moved from where you were um, but the lighting here is very different mm. how you... long does this last until I plane just us out this is actually a... oh we're just there yeah yeah, yeah you're in are we faster in the ethereal plane I hope so well he... <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> It's a no-clip cheat. <laughs> big I thing go with... take a nap. It's it's long rest time. Yeah. Yeah. The big thing is it all makes it so we can't be attacked by the demons. I was going to say, nice. if, if we think yeah. it's the demons safe... Nor- normally, us. <laughs> normally it's up to eight willing creatures, but... No, I figure, like it. That, I you feed enough magic to it. Yeah. No, I like it. So, um, I take a... Okay. Yeah, yeah Bond's like, like I am... I'm bushed. <laughs> <clears throat> um... I leave the death rattle at ten. Okay. And I, I take the wand with me. All right. And I just look at Keo as he's walking away, like, <laughs> "What the fuck do you expect <laughs> me to do with this right now?" You could smack it with Lightbringer. Although that's kind of cruel. Bond says, um, uh, "He actually follows you, Kenny, and he says, "Hey, uh, Kenyon, um, mm. I've, I've been on the ship." kind of a long time still don't know how to fly it necessarily what's our heading do you see the skies out there yeah fuck it all fuck it fuck it all. <laughs> you just go and to I bed. just walk in my room and slam the door <laughs> it's like fuck it all the other thing that was okay there's some deep meaning attached to that somehow. <laughs> yeah. The other thing Keo was thinking was with the protected, since they can't be found, mm-hmm. maybe they're not on the material plane. That's but, clever thinking. Well, it's totally out of, you know, it's probably wrong. It, it might be wrong, but it's, it's, it's clever thinking. Um, uh, so Bon, Bon like goes up to the top deck uh, and Keo and Tin, you're, you're standing up there. Rings and Deke and uh, Yin are standing there as well. And and Bon says, Kinian said, fuck it all. Um, uh, I guess we just head towards the mainland. Um, Rings, uh, you're pretty much the only person here who knows headings. Moonshe out. Moonshay Isles? Yes, let's go there. All right. Uh, At least the southern tip. All right. Northern. Uh, Rings. uh, Moonshay Isles. And she says, do not give me orders. (laughs) Okay, please. Okay. Uh, uh, The heading is set. Um, You guys are kind of on cruise control. Everyone heard a loud scream from Kinian. Okay. About an hour after going to bed. Going to bed. Okay. Did you try to attune to the thingamajig? 
I attuned to the thing of a jig. like opens the door and is like, "Did you try to attune to it?" And I, if Minette opens up the door, he sees me holding a smaller version of the wand of Orcus. And his hair is like pushed back and like singed on the ends, and <laughs> <laughs> he's got like smoke marks on his face. I rolled a fourteen. <laughs> oh, did you? So that's twenty-four. Oh, nice. I made the con save. And then Death Ward went off. (laughs) 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 Essentially. (laughs) Uh, Ah! (laughs) (laughs) Because there's no way I could take that much damage with my health that low. Oh, man. That's hilarious. (laughs) You good? Ouch! (laughs) You sound good. I go back. <laughs> you guys move through this plane, and as you're as you're flying over Chalt, you see, uh, you see the demons are like flooding through the the jungle. Um, it's you all s- dead anyhow. It's all dead anyhow, and and they are <laughs> they're actually going through and like cleaning out the dead, like killing it. You see, uh, you see when when they get to the uh, when you get to the far edge. Demons are actually like overrunning the dead, and the dead are getting pushed into the waters, uh, and the demons start uh, pushing into the waters as well. Um, uh, they seem to uh, be swimming um, or flying or what have you, depending on their their movement type. That's not good. That's very not good. And as you as you all are uh, flying. Uh, <clears throat> probably just as as Chult is kind of on the outside edge of your vision um uh far in the horizon uh you hear like a Phew! you you see this black uh uh necrotic like energy um uh boil up from the from the ground and uh and then uh, it turns into like this cloud, and you you see as everything clears, uh, uh, there stands a gaping rift in uh, space, and you continue sailing on. Um, uh, Bond, uh, in fact, Bond's kind of like, should we even deal with that <laughs> right now? <clears throat> I think that one might be beyond us. The last one we took on almost almost did us in. We've seen a gate like that before? Oh, like a like when we fought uh what's her face? The the fungal lady. She Dree, was... Dreeblux, I think? No. No. Uh, no. No. What was her name? Uh, oh, um Um Zutmoy. 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 Yeah. Yeah, we had to close a rift or something, and and uh, uh, we we saw like uh, uh, the the guy with the two heads and the tentacles. Um, what was his the demogorgon? Yeah, I think I think this one is way beyond us. Like like compared to that, the the last one was like a paper cut. And uh, you guys remember uh, the rift was mm, maybe five foot tall. Uh, this one's like Visible hundreds from, and hundreds yeah. of feet. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We'll come back. Maybe. We <laughs> should kill it. <clears throat> we need. We've got we're our own mission help. that we're supposed to be focusing on. I'm sure Bon would be wanting to Absolutely. focus on that. Yeah. Yep. So you guys travel. Uh, it takes it takes about twelve days to get to Moonshade Isles. Now, this whole time, the um, tuning fork's been buzzing. Yeah. And so at the end of it, all Kyo does is grab the fork and stop it. Okay. And then we like shimmer into reality at the Art at the toe. port. Nice, Art and Big Toe. Yes. Excellent. I would have communi- at least attempted to communicate. I don't know how the whole ethereal plane thing with sure. that would work with that. Um, stuff but i would have communicated with her that we are heading back that way you have written your book right huh because you have a book that when you yes. write in it she sees i just it. don't know how it 
is gotcha. going to work with the ethereal plane. And oh, it works across planes, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you, for sure. you wouldn't. You wouldn't know. And uh, I would have tried at yeah. least. Yep. Yep. Um. Uh. You. You. Uh, Bond's kind of like. Uh. Uh. If. If that. How much would it take for Keo to just drop us out and bring us back in, in case that. Well. Doesn't work across plane. I have a good way. I could use my ethereal-ness spell. You know. Oh, to so, go back? So, yeah, to pull oh, us into perfect. the... Yeah. Perfect. I think okay. that's how that would work if you're actually in the ethereal plane. Yeah, absolutely. It would take you... Because it pulls you to the edge of the ethereal plane. Uh-huh. So you're kind of out of your plane and in it. But if I'm fully in that other plane, it'll probably take me kind of back into the... Yeah, I like that. ...material. That's how I would I would say. Yeah. Um. Okay. Sounds good. Um... So we kind of shimmer into like reality on yeah. this like ghost ship. You you reach the Moonshade Isles, um, uh, setting down uh, in the waters, and uh, uh, Arton is actually there on the docks waiting for you. What did you write for her? I would have expressed interest in having that carpet made, but we still hadn't come to entirely agreeable terms okay at the time and now we are kind of time crunched so she's got um, the upper hand in the negotiation yeah <laughs> i mean if she isn't going to do it then she isn't going to do it and that's just um i don't think a lot of it was that she didn't want to do it it's that she it was the actual time yeah it was yeah, the time to to, to put into it that. yeah um uh she she would she writes back um or in fact she just tells you in person um uh she says listen i i can't i can't do it that fast like physically can't um what's the rush the end of the world <laughs> world world ending apocalypse oh that's it my buddy Lightbringer over here, lords. he'll tell you all about it. <laughs> Demon Lord's trying to encroach on this reality and, you know, kill everybody. Oh. <laughs> Celestial and she, plan. like, slaps you on the shoulder. She's like, well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> uh, that's the best one I've heard so far. Um, and Kinian, like, pulls out the Wand of Orcus and holds it up and says, I killed one. <laughs> she she looks at at the the wand and she, is is it that in your hand? Did you kill that in your hand? No, we we killed the demon lord that, that. Oh. We we've killed what, four, five at this point? Yeah, who's few. counting? Yeah. She she goes kind of sheet white, like I don't think she understood how powerful you guys were oh yeah yeah we're the whole ship shimmering into existence in front of her yeah so, <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. uh uh she she says i i would offer to go with you but uh it doesn't sound safe that's a wise statement yeah Mo most of our most of our hirelings survive <laughs> And like, we'll try I not look to back at the ship. Yeah, and there's like three people on it. Yeah, <laughs> well, Bond, hey, Bond hey. looks at Keo and is most like, of them got taken into the celestial plane. <laughs> it's not that they died. I mean, we lost some to that old death. They just went thing. to heaven. <laughs> Kyo like mis, mis explains it. he's like they're in a better place now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think Bond's just enjoying this explanation. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and um, uh, she says, "Well, um, uh, I mean, you could come back. Uh, I've got your barrels of uh, fire retardant. That's, if uh, that's something. So, I got that. How hmm. long is um, not not in character? How long is the the rest of the travel to? Um, I mean, I guess we haven't really said where we're heading." At this point, if you were to go back to Waterdeep, we're going to like the Cloud Peak have, Mountains, uh, Fandolin, potentially. <laughs> yeah, that might be 
that might be true too. Yeah. You guys haven't really discussed that bit yet. But so if if you were to go back to the origin where you guys left off from, it'd be thirty minus twelve. Mm-hmm. So eighteen days. Plus more for wherever we go from there. Yeah. Um I ask well, I could always Arten. Arten? Yeah. If she has any way to communicate with Waterdeep. Yeah. Um, That's easily. one of my biggest customers. <laughs> I would like to talk to Lyriel. Oh Silverhand. shit. One second. How do you want to talk to her? Lyriel, guess who's t- <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she whips out like a cell phone. <laughs> she, it's, it's like a razor, like a Motorola yeah. razor, and she's like texting six times on the A. Except for it's just a stone. T9. Yeah, it's just a yeah. <laughs> She's like, yeah, you know those jerks who stopped our conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, at whatever way is convenient. <laughs> For you, for yep. her, for whatever. I don't know what you I guys have always... arranged. She's a mysterious you know, mentor. She doesn't have to figure. come with us. We can always just teleport you back to pay and then Yeah. Well Yeah, um uh, if you guys got somebody who can teleport, um now I can show I... you my my teleportation circle. Well, now that I have eighth level spell slots I can cast teleport twice. Because I have the seventh and the eighth, so. that that work. Yeah, so. She she like walks over, uh, or talking yeah, she walks over to Keo and is like, "So you're talking about teleportation? You want to go? Want to go quick? Read my my teleportation circle? Sure, we can trade oh, numbers. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> and I'll, I'm like, first here, this is ours. And yeah, I, yeah. I she... show the Keo one on the deck that I made with all, right. all the little, like muscle Dark. Keos. And... <laughs> All right. Um, uh, she mm-hmm. she takes uh, about thirty minutes to to memorize the symbols. Uh, she kind of sketches them in her sketchbook, mm-hmm. and then she takes you to a uh, building. It's like a it's a brick and mortar like building, mm-hmm. and uh, she takes you inside. And there's all sorts of like uh, workers in here, and it looks almost like a hotel. There's mm-hmm. there's uh, doors going like all the way around this this uh the inside of this building and there's many floors to this building yeah and she walks you up a few steps and uh uh, she unlocks the door and uh when she opens it uh there is a uh, teleportation circle in the center of this room has like a nightstand and like uh, a really simple bedroll Mm -hmm. and she goes uh this is my p.o box (laughs) <laughs> like nice <laughs> it's not my personal teleportation circle I mean I own this one but you know this is the one I give to my customers so they don't send stuff to my house so Kyo gets out a bunch of pieces of paper and starts doing like <laughs> <laughs> okay so he like lays them out and does like a charcoal rub of the, of the circle <laughs> and right. then they're all like at weird angles and stuff and then he puts them together and you know, puts it into... And then it will never work again. <laughs> <laughs> that, was it this way? <laughs> yeah. No, he already has one that's from that barrel. That's yeah. Like that. Yeah. That's how he figured out how to draw addresses. So, Lario. <laughs> uh, uh, do you want to teleport to her? Or... I planned on teleporting. Okay. Before we move on... Yep. Because um, are we still talking to Arden Bigto, yeah. I'm yep. assuming? Yep. We, yep. Got, okay. we got your fire... You did? Hard okay, fail. cool. I still had to pay her 4000 because I only did a deposit, so I'll take that out, and then we got the 12 barrels. Cool. Let's see if we can give it to her in trade with that um, annoying skeleton guy. No, we're <laughs> keeping him. <laughs> <laughs> we're keeping him. <laughs> you hear, like, shh, 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 and he's, like, shaking his head no. <laughs> like, <laughs> Okay, second plan, we'll strap him to the front of the ship. To make it look fearsome. <laughs> his no. his uh, dead mouth just hangs open in a pole. Hey everyone, I'm DM Allen, and thank you so much for joining us once again. 
This is Roll With The Vintage, Season 3, Episode 29. Thank you for listening, and big thank you to our patron supporters. You guys are absolutely amazing. If you want to help support the show, please go check us out on patreon.com slash DM's table. It's there you'll find out more information about what we have to offer, and you can also get exclusive access to the Patreon section on our Discord as well. So go check that out, and while you're out on the internet, go check out our socials. Uh, We're over on Twitter at DM's Table or on Facebook at The DM's Table. And if you're looking for access to our Discord, send us a, a message over on our socials, and I'll send you a link to join. Have you been enjoying Vodette? Well, we have, and we absolutely enjoy Ryan as well, the voice behind Vodette. Ryan is an amazing person, and him and his wife run a really great YouTube channel that you need to go check out. It's called Roll the Number 4 Initiative. And here's Ryan and Dawn to tell you a little bit more about it. Hey everybody, I'm Ryan. And I'm Dawn, and let's get ready to Roll for Initiative. We're a couple that does videos on board games. We also do reviews and Game Master Diaries. We also do interviews, gameplay tips, painting tutorials, and plenty more. If you like what we do here, then don't forget to subscribe and comment on the videos. So enjoy the videos here on Roll for Initiative. Bye! We thank Ryan for joining us as a guest. He's been just absolutely phenomenal. And so go, please go check out their YouTube channel. You will not regret it. All right, let's get into this week's sponsors. First, we start off, as always, Metallic Dice Games. Metallic Dice Games is an amazing, amazing dice company. We absolutely love them. They create very, very high quality dice at very reasonable prices. And you really should go check out the acrylic sets they've got. I really like their Stardust Galaxy, but I'm really liking this unicorn set that I have as well. And speaking of this fabulous unicorn set, we will be giving it away soon. So listen, in future episodes, we will have information on how to get into the drawing for this phenomenal set and uh we're super excited to do this so thank you so much metallic dice games if you go to metallicdicegames.com and use the coupon code dms table one zero you will get 10 percent off on your next order go check that out it's dms table one zero and of course the affiliate link is in the description now let's talk about audible Audible is an amazing audiobook platform with over 180,000 books to choose from. Audible is just phenomenal. I think they are the best audiobook platform there is out there right now. I absolutely adore it, and I really think that you should give it a try. And so, why don't you help support the show and try a really awesome platform? Just go to audibletrial.com slash RWA. It's there where you can sign up for a 30-day free trial. You'll get two free audiobooks. You'll get access to Audible Originals. And it's absolutely fantastic. And you're helping the show. Go check that out. And maybe add Adam's recommendation as one of your two free books. So here's Adam with his recommendation. Take it away, Adam. Hey, guys. This week, I'm letting my wife pick the book. She suggests Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. After serving out a year of hard labor in the salt mines of Endovir for her crimes, 18-year-old assassin Selena Sardolian is dragged before the crown prince. Prince Dorian offers her freedom on one condition. She must act as his champion in a competition to find a new royal assassin. Her opponents are men thieves and assassins, and warriors from across the empire, each sponsored by a member of the king's council. If she beats her opponents in a series of eliminations, she'll serve the kingdom for three years and then be granted her freedom. Selena finds her training sessions with the captain of the guard, Westfall, challenging and exhilarating, but she's bored stiff by court life. Things get a little more interesting when the prince starts to show interest in her. But it's the gruff Captain Westfall who seems to understand her best. 
Then, one of the other contestant turns up dead, quickly followed by another. Can Selena figure out who the killer is before she becomes a victim? As the young assassin investigates, her search leads her to discover a greater destiny than she could possibly have imagined. Check it out on Audible today. Thank you, Adam. Go check out that book. Go check out audibletrial.com slash RWA to support the show. And last but not least, we love to talk about Incompetech.com. Incompetech.com is a phenomenal audio score website. It is where we get almost all of our scores and they are absolutely fantastic. What we love about that website, you've heard me talk about it time and time again, is they use a great system for cloud tags. You just go on there, you type in the mood, the genre that you're looking for, and boom, you've got a great selection for the creative project you're working on. It's really simple and that's why we love it. Go check out Incompetech.com today. All right, that's all I've got for you this week. Let's get back to the episode and I'll see you out on the internet. Bye guys. So, Lyriel, yep. are, are we in communication somehow um uh she's okay so so artin's like um i've got an idea and she takes you uh to a different room same same building as her p.o box and uh she takes you into a room and she as she does she's writing in a on a parchment of telescription and throws it up in the air and it poofs um and when you walk in this room, it looks almost like uh, one of those uh, jail booths. So there's a plane of glass and like a, a uh, half circle receiver on on the wall. And that plane <laughs> of glass, uh, it turns, there's like a, a burp of smoke as Artin walks in. She like pulls two, um, two fork uh, uh, switches hmm. on the walls. Shigoo, shigoo. One turns on the lights, the other one turns on the smoke. And uh, uh, as you get up to the glass, uh, the smoke forms into Lirio's silver hand. So I'm pretty sure you told us not to go looking for the Undying Sage, but we kind of need to. Oh shit, why? Sorry, that's not her voice. <laughs> oh shit, why? <laughs> um, he has oh. something we need. We we lost some students. Who's that? Hey, I can't I can't hear the students the are receiver. fine. What? I uh can you put Keo on? I can't hear it when he's not talking into the receiver. He he doesn't need to talk to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it sounded like some about students. They're fine. Oh, oh okay. Um, <clears throat> it, the, totally normal to bring up that they're fine, you know, <laughs> out of nowhere. He brought it up. <laughs> I'm clarifying. Everything's okay. No need to worry. We do need to find Klauth. Do you know where we can find him? Um, no. And that's kind of why Klauth is still surviving do you have any way of communicating with him that we need to speak to him yeah i i know a a certain little town uh that that just so happens to have connections um uh you guys have been there it's uh Fandolin. that figures yep yeah, that, that's about right. Thank I, you. I think I might have left some stuff in fan. No Way problem. back. Yes. Aelin? Aelin? <laughs> <laughs> you definitely left the violin. Or the fiddle, or whatever you played. Um, I must have found another one along the way. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, you have Your back stuff, to the my stuff, it's all kind of the same. It's just tough. <laughs> I imagine that we're still trying to keep the ship with us, uh-huh. which is why I'm not, like, itching to teleport somewhere. Sure. Um, when last we discussed Artin making the flying carpet for me, mm-hmm. um, she had said that her work was an issue, and that we could help with that that would help 
get her free to start working on one quicker? Yeah, uh, she was. Uh, she likes to do cartography on the side, right. uh, and that's what was kind of holding her up is sure. uh, mapping the Moonshe Isles. I'm thinking that I might stay and assist her with that. Okay. And then just teleport Bay using the ship. the ship with my ring. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. I don't have anything in particular to do on the ship. Okay. Aside from the fact that our ship is on a skeleton crew at the moment. But L- we just literally. Need, yeah. <laughs> need to hire a necromancer. We'll be fine. Uh, I can raise the dead. I mean, they won't we be super helpful. We don't have any dead but... on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we okay. could hire some more people, I'm sure, here in the Giles to help with that. That For wouldn't sure. be a bad idea. Yeah, to at least pick up like two or three. Temporary. I mean, we could we take need, a look. It's what, we need like five people minimum to operate the ship or something? Uh, yeah, I believe it's five. Yep. So we should probably get to at least that. It's an <laughs> I option. Think, I think like <clears throat> as that as that conversation's going on, uh, uh, we like we cut over the ship and Bond's like, hey, Kenyon, um... You think we should hire some people? <laughs> I kind of like sigh and look look directly at the wand of Orcus. Uh-huh. Almost like it's talking to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mm, no. And skeletons start rising out of the ground. It is a ghost Out of the ground nearby, and then, like, they come on the ramp. Yeah, (laughs) it's just like... about. I assume they don't just come out of the wood of (laughs) our ship deck, so... Oh, God, that'd be bad. That'd be real bad. About 38 skeletons from a local graveyard (laughs) come out of the ground and walk toward the ship. (laughs) I think, think, like, in the graveyard, there's, like, a morning... Uh, uh, like couple <laughs> that are like standing over grandma's grave, oh, and God. and like uh, it starts like busting we up we from the grandma. Ground. We don't no. want grandma. <laughs> no, but Pick it's like they skeleton. get they get traumatized. <laughs> we want, we yes. want young, healthy skeletons. Yeah. What'd you say? Thirty-eight. About thirty-eight 30, skeletons. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Animate <laughs> as they're and like walk toward the ship, walking onto the ship. Uh, Bond's like. <sighs> We'll see if Tin likes this. <laughs> what, are we going to be fucking Pirates of the Caribbean now? Apparently. <laughs> uh, so as soon as Keo comes to the um, ship, you know, comes to the dock and sees all the skeleton, he's going to run back into town and buy a bunch of garlic. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. All right. And all right. I start barking out nautical orders okay. to these skeletons. All right, and uh, they all just kind of shake their heads, and they know exactly what you need. Sorry, yeah. so how did you get the skeletons? The wand of orchid. Okay, and that won't have a time limit. Like those skeletons will be there until they get killed, or twenty-four hours. Oh, okay. And then he can animate them again. Oh, yeah, because yeah, the would, bones they are would just collapse still on there. the deck. Okay. Good yeah. thing supper's not here. <laughs> <laughs> Poor supper. Yes, we're going full on Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes. Could be a happy uh, dog. That's right. awesome. Well, well, I'm not back at the ship yet, so. Yeah. She'll kind of come on the ship and just destroy <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, turn them into just <laughs> dust. Just. <laughs> yep. So, does that sound reasonable, Arden? Um, help you with your cartography? I mean, it'll take me a little bit to get used to it, but, like, I'm a quick study. Yeah, um, uh, that would, that'd help me, um, still gotta worry about that safety thing, but, uh, uh, if you guys are heading up north, maybe you could just drop me off in Waterdeep, I, oh, I, I don't need you to come with oh. us, oh, 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 I see what you're saying, okay, I was okay. gonna stay here, Right, I've right. I've got a yeah, way to that, get back to my ship later. Yeah, that's what I meant too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, More romantic or... without Kenyan. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. I'll I'll stay I'll I'll stay here. 
Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good? Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, uh, so, so Manette, you're staying in uh, the Moonshade Isles for the time being. 20 uh, days or so, a, whatever. You a greater yeah. beard? No. <laughs> Wink. Decidedly not. Uh, um, all right. So, so Tin, you're, you're like starting to walk back to the ship. Uh, and you're most of the way there. And you hear like over the ring, Bond's like, Tin, um, Kinian did something with that wand. We have, uh, we have no need for crew people. Uh, don't kill our skeletons. Why do we have skeletons? Well, Kinian, Kinian's got that. That wand thing. And over the the ring, you, Gideon says, "Yeah, it told me I can control the dead." Holy shit! It talked to you. Yeah, you can't hear it. Nope, decidedly not. And uh, like I Ezekiel, like, Bond, the fuck is going yeah, on? Ezekiel's like, <laughs> <laughs> nope, can't hear it either. So who's Ezekiel with right now? Because um, like, I, uh, I, well, I yeah, I, I think Tin. he's I think he's on the ship. I don't think Tin. I did not take him with me. I actually think I might keep him with me cool. just to oh okay learn stuff from him. Sure. I don't necessarily want to attune, but okay. Does anybody actually have identify? I can cast it. I can do it as a ritual. I think because you could probably figure out. What's he do? Yeah. So Bond's like, Kenny, we're going to have to unpack that. Don't listen to <laughs> anything it says. He says he's going to help us defeat Orcus. But we... We already defeated Orcus. He, he is... He is... Orcus is... What? I, I just... I don't trust it, man. Huh. Seems nice to me. Uh, so, yeah, Tin, don't kill the, don't kill the undead. We'll have to figure something out about Kinney in here. Um, Minette, you joining us? Uh, I've made arrangements to stay here. I need to come back to the ship and grab some stuff, but then you guys can take off. Dope. Okay. All and right. I appear back at the ship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tin, and grab hasn't, myself. Tin yep. hasn't responded yet on the ring. Yep. Um, like, hey, Bon, check this out. And uh, one of the skeletons, I cast uh, Toll of the Dead on it. <laughs> it like, uh, uh, you see, like, space rips, and uh, uh, one of one of the uh, tentacles from from the spatial uh, spatial rip, like, whips out and grabs the the skeleton and pulls it in, and uh, and then the space shuts, and Bond's like. Now we have 37. Stop casting that spell. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what Minette says casually as he's leaving the ship. <laughs> Kinian, stop it. <laughs> stop casting that spell. Um, yeah, I, I am going to take Ezekiel if nobody else checks. Nope. Is the flame retardant paint stuff already at the ship? Do we have to bring yep. it to the ship? Yep, there's barrels on the dock uh, ready to load. And I think uh, I think between uh, Kinian and Bon, uh, the the skeletons are, like, loading the ship up, uh, rolling the barrels on, on board and stuff. What do you want to do with them? You want to apply them now? My crew can apply them. Your, your crew? <laughs> yeah, yeah, me and... My unseen servant and the animated broom, and then I'll deek. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Yeah. We're a team. I turn to deek and I'm like, you don't have to do that, man. He like, he leans in towards you. He's like, hey, Kenyon, you kind of smell. And he leans back. So does he like smell like not like alcohol or? Uh, uh, Deke looks at you and he's like, I don't know. He just kind of smells. Smell great. Uh, sure. 
Sure. Maybe it's that perfume that you keep wearing. <laughs> so you smell like rotting flesh yet? <laughs> You're in the next Orcus, right? Uh. You took his wand. That's how it works. <clears throat> if you kill Santa Claus, you become Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> I killed Glassstaff. Now I'm Glassstaff. Right. So. It's canon in this in this reality. <laughs> She's right. Tim Allen can attest. Um, <laughs> so uh, so that, uh, that's it, children. If you want to be Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Is that, you know, there can be only one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so... So, Tin, if you're going to be uncomfortable with this whole skeleton thing, y- you could stay in the Moon Shales un- until we need to meet up Fandolin. Head to Fandolin, Kenyon. Fandolin. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. <laughs> isn't Gosh! That, isn't that where I found you guys last time? Yeah. Oh, I know exactly where that is. And we start setting off. Uh, so, Tin, are you staying in uh, Moonshay, or are you going with? Or are you destroying undead on the ship? <laughs> well. How many, how many experience points are you from the next level? <laughs> A lot. She got an 18. Yeah, I got an 18. Just killing my skeletons every day. <laughs> I would count that as PvP, and there's no experience for that. So, <laughs> if I did go on the ship, I would definitely no, cast Hollow, like outside of my room. But I'm trying to decide. You don't want them to clean up your room? <laughs> they can clean the whole ship. They're fucking abominations. Well, since Nymeria is in the celestial plane, whatever. I'm going to stay with Manette. All right. I think Tanuviel would not be able to handle 30 days without killing them. Yeah. Yeah. I I completely yeah. agree. I think that's a good choice. <laughs> Kyo's going to spend 30 days sneaking through Manette's workshop. <laughs> um, Finding all the traps. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. You, you hear long, every, long rest. Yeah, you might each not trap. want to do that. You, you hear like every day. You hear shit. <laughs> Kyo comes out and he's like bright orange from like a dye pack. <laughs> <laughs> the dye pack had a note. You nosy bastard, Kyo. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So before the ship sure leaves. Okay, before the ship leaves. So, I go to get some stuff. And... I don't... I don't like this, but I especially don't want the skeletons to go inside my room. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if the room's locked or not, but... Yeah. I am going to cast Symbol, which takes a minute. Is that like Warding Glyph? Uh, oh... Anyway, yeah. um, so I'm going to cast symbol. takes one minute. Um, there's a glyph on the on my door now that's nearly invisible. It requires an intelligence check against my DC to find it. I won't find it. Yeah. <laughs> no. Nope. Um, and the effect that I put in it, well... It's triggered by someone trying to open my door, and then the effect is fear. So, target becomes afraid for a minute and moves at least 30 feet away from the glyph on each of its turns. Um, nice. So, I tell I tell Kenyon and Bon, mostly Kenyon, I'm like, I put some magic on my door. Don't try to go in my room. Okay. Or you won't like it. <laughs> and I'll know that you tried. What? I would never. So. Oh, I'm also <laughs> looking at those skeletons. I'm like, I, think I almost want them to try, <laughs> even though it wouldn't kill them. Give a, me an excuse to kill them when I get back. Bad. So over the ring, you hear, what do you think she keeps in her room? Not her room. <laughs> I realize <laughs> that did get me <laughs> Over the ring. None of your business. Yes! <laughs> she, she hurt me. 
She's a witch. <laughs> She's a witch. <laughs> I'm actually a cleric, Kinian. There's difference. Now I hear two voices. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Palami's corpse? In uh, it is in Everland. Everland. Yeah. Okay. Everland. Yep. Um, I do ask Keo mm-hmm. to. I can water your plants. I think you have the plants. I don't think I have any. <laughs> but I tell Keo that I entrust you with making sure that the ship is properly coated with the fire repellent stuff, focusing mainly on, like, combat areas and everything exterior. Keo says, aye, aye, and does one of those. <laughs> like, like a salute. The, the palm open salute, you know. Nice. And, um... He, he also gets two more, he buys two more pipes and an extra, um, an extra hammock and some, some of the finest smoking weeds he can find. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I, I check to see if there's a store selling potions. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's like a, uh, like a fine goods potions store. Do they have interns? That Just make random ass potions. <laughs> no, this is a very fine establishment. Damn, I don't know if the, that's the kind of potions you want, Gideon. <laughs> it's a it's a very old lady. Uh, uh, she's got uh, like gray hair. It's all pulled back into a, a nice tight bun, um, uh, and she's looking at you with with uh, her bored eyes, and uh, she says, "What can I do for you?" Am I? There by myself. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I take my hands out of my pockets, and I hold them up to her, and I ask her, "What's happening to me?" Uh, uh and like you hold out your hands and your fingertips, uh, and like the tips of your fingers and your nails are like, like black. Um, your your nails are almost cracking, like they're void of nutrient, and uh, uh, your fingertips almost look like frostbitten. And uh, she says, well, "It looks like you got into a bit of a scuffle with uh, some cold." Hmm. What do you have that helps? Um. You could. I don't. I don't really know. Uh, uh, you, you could maybe like talk to a cleric and maybe get that regenerated. Um, uh, if you, if you like get hurt, I've got healing potions. I don't really have anything to grow those back. And she's like, "Can you kind of get those out of my face? It kind of smells." How many potions do you have? Hmm. Healing potions, I've got, um, 12. Well, it's not a full bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? He says the most random shit, I love it. Slash well, Ben. But wouldn't you want to soak in them so it could, like, heal your fingertips? <laughs> you want to soak your whole body to heal your fingertips? <laughs> Just soak your fingertips in a bowl of the potion. <laughs> anyway, I'll take all your of them. toes. <laughs> That's a that's a hefty sum. Um, uh, she does some fast math, and that's gonna run you um, something like uh, six hundred gold pieces. Oh, that's so much. There's a there's a discount when you buy in bulk. Actually, uh, <laughs> uh, give me a persuasion, please. Actually, there's a restock fee. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I was going, but that's, I, I want to give him that's persuasion. That's a seven. <laughs> seven? <laughs> she says, uh, oh, uh, actually, no, I totally forgot to add. Um, there is a $100 restock fee um, because uh, you've wiped me out of all my hard work. Um, I appreciate you buying all that, but now any other patrons that live here in town... Uh, are going to be out for probably 30 days. It takes a long time to make those. There's like, like almost like fire burning <laughs> yeah, his hair in, in Kinian's eyes. 
and uh, he <laughs> almost enrages, yeah. but instead decides to attempt to intimidate. Okay. Um, what do you do to intimidate? I walk over to a, a nearby shelf that uh, does not have potions on it. Okay. And uh, push it over. <laughs> All right. You you push the shelf over. Um, give me intimidation, please. Uh, with advantage, um, she is a old lady. Only a fourteen. <laughs> Only a fourteen. Oh That'll man. That'll be a fifty dollar reshell fee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even Kenyon feels a little bad <laughs> yeah. about. I, down an old lady. I think she's a pretty average person, though. Um, uh, so she's she's going to like be wide-eyed at you, and she says, uh, "Okay, okay, okay. Listen, listen, listen. I'll give you five fifty, but you have to leave now." So All right. All five right. fifty for twelve. All right. Um, uh, and I think, uh, I think Bon and Vodette are just kind of hanging out at this point. Uh, uh, I think, I think Bon's taking some time to just kind of get to know Vodette and, uh, hear about, like, his stories before, uh, going down to Cholt and stuff like that. Um, the, the two players who aren't here today. Yeah. <laughs> Bonding. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> no. Banding. Banding. I, I do set up a um, a hammock for Vodette up in the up in the crow's nest, so he can feel homey, you know, with all the undead shuffling below us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just like Chalt. Yeah. <laughs> Memories he definitely wants to be reminded of every day. We need to right. get some xylophones. <laughs> On the way out of the shop, <laughs> I take a pair of gloves and put them on my hands. Okay. Like Not while I'm exiting. It. Okay. Do you try to conceal it or no? I try to conceal my hands. But yeah, but not not. No, the I theft. just I just take the thug. Okay. Yeah, she she doesn't say anything. He is a pirate lord. He can get away with petty crimes. Yeah. Technically, that yeah. is my. Yep. My exactly. Shtick. She she's yeah. now afraid of you. She understands the core of your being. <laughs> it's a pirate thing, man. If it's just one pair of gloves that you're gonna steal, it yeah, could be a lot worse. It's not. It's not worth another shelf. Um. Okay. Uh. So, uh, you guys set out uh, for Fandolin. Um. The travel is going to take a. Let's see. Fandolin is north of Waterdeep. Um. Uh. It is going to take uh, about 19 days to get to Fandolin. I should be able to paint the ship in that amount of time. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. I've got a, a question regarding loot that we've previously claimed. The The Helm of Brilliance, we didn't leave that in another town, right? It's, it's on the, the ship? I think it's on the ship. Like, I don't remember us giving yes, that away. Yes, we have the Helm of Brilliance. Uh... Attunement. Correct. Kenyon's not going to attune to it, but he's going to use it. To cover his hair that's falling out. So Kenyon, like the next you see him 30 days later, he's wearing his full armor. He's wearing gloves, like <laughs> essentially like trying to put on gauntlets to cover all the skin. Okay. And he's also wearing the Helm of Brilliance because it totally covers your head. Essentially, <laughs> so he doesn't have a Craig Cat headdress anymore. He's armored up, and he spends a lot of time looking at the wand of Orcus, which isn't creepy at all. With his lips moving. Yeah, but it's she... a good thing I'm not on the ship because <laughs> that would. Kyo that notices would end. none of this because he's using a detail brush for the whole. Shit, <laughs> 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 for getting all the fine grains. Yeah, because um, right. Tin Tin gave it to him as a task, and so he's not even letting his helpers help him. 
Um, they I can think... help them spot missed spots. And that's the thing. Like I knew giving it to Keo that <laughs> I wouldn't have to worry about it. I I think uh, over the 19 days, Bon is going to uh, 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 one of the days after he starts noticing you wearing the Helm of Brilliance. Um, he's like, "Hey, Kinian, are you good?" Can I show you something? Yeah. I take the gloves off, and I show Bon what's what's happened. Oh my god, that's gross! Apparently the gloves can hide the stench. Can you... Can you cure me? Uh, he's like, um... He, he puts his hands around your hands... And like holds them uh, up, kind of close to his chest, and and like you, you you feel it. It's like normal, but in Bond's hands, it's kind of squishy, uh, <sighs> uh, and almost like almost like you're starting to lose bone in the tips of the finger, type type thing. And uh, he closes his eyes, and you see like a flash of radiant, like underneath his eyelids, spill out just slightly from the seams. And your hands start to glow slightly, and um, and when he opens his eyes, it's just pure light. And uh, uh, he lets go, and he says, uh, "That might help for a little while." And you look down, and your hands look fine. They look great. You like sniff the tips mm-hmm. of the fingers, and there's no smell of rot. Bon. You're the man. Mm-hmm. You know I'm gonna tell Ten about this, right? <laughs> what? Come on, man. What do you have to tell? You just fixed me. This isn't healthy. What do you mean it's not healthy? I see you sitting in the corner talking in a thing. It's a, it's a fucking skeleton. I mean, it's bad enough we found two of those things. <laughs> He's telling me all sorts of ways for us to fight these demon lords. Like what, dude? At least tell me that I'm the strongest. Okay. I mean, we all know that. And you don't gotta say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> and he's taught me how to cast magic. And Powerful you magic. You haven't exploded the ship? <laughs> Listen, man. It, the, that just, spell. Just... That spell that killed you. Yeah. I can do that now. And and he like he kind of like rubs his brow with his hands. And he looks at you and he he says, "Man, that's uh that's pretty fucked up." Um Well, at least you're on our side, right? Well, yeah, of course. Okay, man. Um, you let me know if you're feeling hanky. What? Hanky? No, that... no, that's di- that's different. You guys... That's, that's for rings. Yeah, um... <laughs> <laughs> just a heads up, the, the walls are thin on this ship while we're talking. <laughs> I'm not saying you're the worst neighbor. <laughs> but you're not the best. <laughs> Well, thanks to you, I know a certain someone who's going to give it some special attention to me tonight. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, all right, you're welcome. I I am helping you in your weird relationship thing. I'm going to go hang out with Vodette. All right, say hi to my crew. <sighs> And like a skeleton walks right past us and like turns and looks and just keeps walking. Yeah, he like he like turns and gives like the guy head nod, like, what's up? So. <laughs> and like just keeps walking. Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't like that they cook the food for us, man. They're way better cooks than Keo though. <laughs> That's true. Right? That's true. I think he, I saw him throw uh, a boot. In the soup the other night. Well, that's why it's it tasted 
a little off. I heard soul was a delicacy. <laughs> soul food. <laughs> well, I, I, was, <laughs> I, I was thinking more the fish, but uh, same thing. <laughs> I'll let you know if it starts to be a problem, but uh, yeah. You have seems, you learned? He seems any... really nice. Have you? You haven't talked to him? No, no, I can't hear him, Kenyon. Oh, he's not like Ezekiel. And where is that bony old guy? Oh, he's with he's with Manette. Oh, yeah. So this guy doesn't like Ezekiel that much. No? No. Okay. Okay. I I'm watching I'm watching you, Kinian. I trust you. I don't trust it. Hmm. Okay. Last time you had a weapon that controlled you, people got hurt. A shiver goes down. Yeah, that'll never happen. <laughs> That'll never happen. Plus, like, you see this part right here? And I, like, I put my hand up and, like, touch along Bond's, like, forehead. I'm yeah. like, your bone's thicker here now, thanks to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Almost as strong as an orc. And I, like, give him, like, a little, like, guy, like, yeah. pu punch, punch to his shoulder, yeah. like, sending him back, like, a foot. <laughs> like, poof. <laughs> oh. Um. He says, yeah, I I think I'm going to hang out with Vodette now. We're supposed to play some cards. You want to join? A sure. beer? I like beer. Excellent. Um, uh, Manette and Tin, do you guys do anything for the, uh, in the 19 days other than? Helping. What, what does Ezekiel on? know about the Obsidian Flame? About the Obsidian Flame. Okay, so Ezekiel, uh, you're you're talking to him one day, and uh, and uh, you ask him, and he says, "Well, um, well, I'm one of, I'm one of the first, um, uh, kind of like Mark One type type situation. <laughs> um, uh, uh, yeah, we were we were humans once." The protected and uh, uh, I don't know. They had us all standing in lines in these in these like formations, and uh, we had to walk into the flame. Um, it's kind of trippy. It's like you see black flame, but it's not black. It's like the absence of everything. And uh, and when we walked by, it somehow imbued us with something. It changed us. And I had powers. Um, uh, it was created by uh, the Archdeva Galadria. Um, that's pretty much all I know about it. I know they used it to create a lot of things. Uh, the Rod of Law. Um, they used it to create these gateways that we would walk through and we could go to different planes like instantly. Um, they they used it to make all sorts of things. I think a dragon even helped. Some gold dragon. Epido. Uh, yeah, I think that was his name. He's a friend of ours. Hmm. I'm surprised he's still alive. Um. Yeah, yeah. I. I mean, that's that's all I really know about it. I know it it takes magic somehow from the world and can transfer it to other things. So like it it pulls from the weave and. Yeah. Does that leave the weave? entirely intact or is that why I'm not really sure yeah that would make sense of why the weave is weakened and gods can't rope the the plane 
now that you say that, like, that might, that might have been the reason. Maybe, maybe that was a defense to keep the demon lords from walking on the material plane. But it clearly didn't work. Interesting. Cool. Thanks. No problem. Is there anything else uh, you want to know from him? Does he have any information on the demons that I would not already know is what I would want to find out? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Probably no? spends his whole time asking for a mace. For a mace? <laughs> for her mace, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, I just, I just want to hold it. Nope. One more time. Hold it with what? My mouth. Ew, no. Gross. I mean, I don't have hands. Exactly. It treated me well. It was nice. It was a nice mace. Did it have any secret properties that maybe... Not, no. No? Not that mace. Okay. So, uh, uh, what's Kyo do over the 19 days? So, while the sun's up, yeah. Kyo's painting the ship, coating it. You know, layer after layer. And then when it gets too dark out, he's um, playing music and smoking pipes with um, with Deke and Vaudette <laughs> up in the crow's nest. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Vaudette, Vaudette's like, uh, as as you guys are like smoking and and just having a fun time, uh, Vaudette, <clears throat> he, he's like, all right, all right, all right. I got an awesome trick. Watch this. And uh, and he takes like uh, like a pouch, like a purse pouch and fills it with like uh, he like he like assumedly goes over and grabs a little bit of your bed, like some of the gold and copper and like throws it in the purse pouch, like not thinking about it. Feels and like, and, like really big. Yeah. Yeah. And he like holds it and he, he feels like the weight. And then uh, he looks at you and kind of smirks. And then he turns and he huh, just hucks it off into the air. Like it goes off. Mage hand. <laughs> you, and and uh, uh, before you can do anything, he like holds up the marble. And uh, and he's like, shoot. We're not over. Uh, we're not over solid ground. And, and it starts to plummet. And you catch it with Mage Hand. <laughs> you guys reach the mainland after a a good long time, and um, uh, something that you notice is uh, you notice the Delimbier, uh, uh River is um, uh, this is the river you guys traveled up near Daggerford, mm -hmm. and uh, you notice that it is still very black um uh and it it's got like this black ichor that continues to pour into the ocean um into the sea and uh it's creating this bloom of like oily ichor out into the sea um i thought we killed that ugly yeah but mm -hmm. she already had polluted the rivers when she was traveling and I don't think her death would have made that automatically disappear. Mm. Probably needs a bunch of clerics or something. Yeah. Somebody to fix the... Probably a bunch of druids, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably yeah. going to be a big druid probably party. Druid purify circle the river. to purify it. Yeah. Um, and what, what, what's a druid? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you guys, you guys pass over this river and it is, uh, just this black ichor. And, uh, as you're passing over, uh, you start seeing like some of the small towns not far from the river have like smoke pouring up from them. There isn't like a lot, but it's still kind of alarming. Um, what do you do? Probably from the boil water advisory. <laughs> <laughs> I direct the the skeleton crew to to make for the ice cleft nation. Okay. 
Make for Succumber. And, uh, I would like to, to jump off the ship and fly to the first village that smoke's coming from to, to check it out. Okay, okay. Hey, thank you so much for listening. Uh, what a fantastic episode. We cannot wait for next week's episode. Uh, we hope you stick around to find out what happens next. If you want to find out more about the show, about our characters, or things like that, go check us out on dmstable.com backslash rwa. DMs Table has got information on how to contact us through Twitter or Facebook or things like that. Um, go check it out, and we'll see you out on the internet. See ya.